Hi, Peter. It's, it's delightful to have Peter on, on the robot because uh, about partway through Second Life, I became fascinated with a question. Uh, well, I became fascinated with the idea that this idea of these robots and, uh, and building them. And I actually started, you know, I am want to imagine crazy ideas that I'd like to build, you know, despite whatever I'm working on at the moment. And one of the ones that I remember halfway through Second Life was I was just nuts about this idea. And now there are several companies that are starting to actually build these things. But it actually brings to my mind an interesting question. And I hope that in a wandering talk tonight, we can maybe touch on this a little bit, which is, um, are we going to extend ourselves in the real world in the way that Peter is doing right now? A robot, uh, he has this ability to remote control it. and and put himself into a kind of a meta, you know, or, or a quasi sort of physical form here? Or are we instead going to digitize everything, uh, title of the talk, or, 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 you know, a big thought, and go inside virtual worlds and do a lot of stuff there, right? And in my mind, and I bet you guys have thought about this uh, and will think about this, this session perhaps more than I have, it's an interesting question that I don't really know the answer to. Will we do it this way, the, the Peter way, um, or will we do it by continuing to immerse ourselves in virtual worlds to the point where things that we thought we were going to have to solve in reality sort of just don't matter anymore? In 1999, when Second Life was getting started, I was, a, uh, I was an entrepreneur in residence at a big venture capital firm called Axel. And I remember just, I, I look back on it, and with hindsight, you say, boy, that was so bizarre. I remember this conversation I was having there with uh, Jim Breyer, who was the managing partner at Axel, and I bet Jim was just thinking, who is this guy? I mean, and I, I had come from Real Networks, where I was the CTO. I had quit to start this crazy virtual world stuff, and I was, I was, I was talking to Jim, and I just remember I threw out this bizarre thought that I had been having, and this is before Second Life was built at all. Um, I threw this thought out to him. I said, do you know what tunneling is? Now, I, now this is a class. Only, only here do I get to, like, like, how many people know what quantum mechanical tunneling is here, right? Like, a lot. I love it. It's my gang. Um, so tunneling, of course, is this phenomena where uh, if you have a marble and you have it a, in a cup, and you shake the cup just a little bit, just enough to roll the marble around in the bottom. If it's a big classical marble, you can shake that cup forever. And when you come back, you'll still find the marble in it. You can do it as long as you like. You can do it for a billion years. It doesn't matter. But as you guys probably know, in the quantum mechanical domain, you get this very odd behavior, which is if you shake the cup just a little, and then you come back the next day, marble's gone. It actually just left the cup. It just went through the sidewall of the cup. It, it tunneled, as we say in quantum mechanics, through a, a, what's called a classical barrier. It just left. There's a statistical probability that a very small quantum mechanical particle, like an electron, will just leave the container that it's in by way of the wall. And there was this thing that was going on at the time. I was basically starting to do some of the early thinking and engineering around physics simulation in Second Life. And I was encountering this problem, which was that when you try to basically simulate little marbles running into each other in a physics simulator on a computer, that is to say, when you try to redo the laws of physics on a computer, and the computer has only a finite amount of power, you run into this very interesting problem, which is that, well, and I'll, I'll say what the problem is, and then I'll go back to why, but. Basically, if you leave a marble in a cup in Second Life, and you leave all night, and you come back, what happens? The marble's gone. And it actually turns out that that problem isn't fixable. So f what I'm trying to say is, if your computers are only so fast at simulating a virtual world, that is to say, if you have f a finite number of computers, and you want to simulate a certain amount of virtual space, You run into this problem, and it turns out you can't solve it, that if you don't want things to bounce out of, if you don't want that little marble to leave the cup that it's in, you actually would have to have an infinite amount of computing power uh, to guarantee that it won't over a certain amount of time. 
Does everybody sort of see where I'm going with this? So what was just incredibly interesting to me, and I was already very interested in virtual worlds, was this bizarre fact that the computational limits imposed by simulation when you were doing, when you were simulating a virtual world on a computer, essentially resulted in the same kind of, I'm just going to say, uh, artifacts or problems that make quantum mechanics weird. So I think that's fascinating. You know, does that mean we're simulated by computers? I, I don't think it's, I don't know how material a question is. That, that's like a sci-fi question. But I think it tells us something incredibly fascinating about the nature of things, that you would have this oddly similar situation. And it also may make you think something about vir both virtual worlds and the future of our own world as it becomes increasingly virtual. Some of the things that we see sort of happening quantum mechanically at a very small scale actually sort of happen in virtual worlds and therefore happen more in our own world as we increasingly simulate it with computers. So I just thought everybody here would enjoy that, that opening thought that I don't think I'd throw out at any other conference or anything. Um, you know, there's a, there's a big question here, which is, the physical world that we live in right now came before us, and it's, it's, it's got some pretty hard and fast rules, uh, mysterious wonders of quantum mechanics notwithstanding. We live in a world that preceded us uh, by any argument and is, 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 is pretty fixed in its ways. You know, the physical laws are what they are. So there's a fascinating question, and it's the question that inspired me as a kid, and which is why I'm telling you this. There's a fascinating question, which is, how would we redo everything? If we were recreating the world, if we had sufficient computing power to recreate the world and everything that's inside it, but of course, if you got to redesign the world all over again, you might attach metadata to the atoms, right? You could actually, I suppose, have atoms, if you will, the smallest, most indivisible particles of your new virtual world that actually had like the names of the people who they belonged to on them. So that's what I mean by that when I ask that question. And I, I, I mean, this is the kind of thing we all ought to be thinking about a lot because if Second Life is any indication, we're about to have this power. <laughs>